we have al, uh, al Haji Al-Hassan uh, Suhini, is MP for uh, Tamale North. Uh, he's here. Uh, Bernard Radio has, always, has been here already. Legal practitioner has been here since morning. And then uh, next to, on my right hand side, we have Richard Ahiangba, who is the MPP uh, Communications, a member of the MPP Communications team, and uh, private legal practitioner, Martin Pebo. Uh, gentlemen, great to have you on, on the show. And uh, be we'll be launching into the discussion on the special prosecutor beginning the prosecuting against uh, uh, Boku Central MP Muhammad Yaruga. But before that, uh, let me quickly uh, read through some of the messages you've been sending to our WhatsApp line 020 216 uh, This one says, now they want to take Stoneboy on just because he was de defending himself. How about Charterhouse who failed in terms of security? You didn't uh, give us your name, but next time add your name so we can acknowledge that. And uh, from Bipwa Mohammed in Wa says Chatterhouse should seriously be blamed for the unfortunate incident that happened at the VGM. I understand Shatawale did not even uh, sit where he was originally giving. It's also a fact that security was loose and protocols were not followed. Uh, thank you very much. And this one also from Noel. Uh, Universal. Noel Universal from Ho says, good morning, comrades. For me, I think the decision taken by the board is, is not really free and fair because the two parties were rude, but one overreacted. If not, we could have experienced an excellent show. And indeed, I like your outfits uh, so well with uh, the set in the studio this morning. Okay, you didn't add your name, but thank you very much. Uh, good morning. My name is William uh, from Takradi. Can we take Charterhouse to court? Uh, because... They couldn't provide us a good security in the auditorium. If people could send guns inside just to harm people, then can you imagine? All right. So uh, Wilson from Aigbe Town says, I believe it's about time we brought some decency and discipline into our music industry. The vulgar words used in our music even informs the behavior of people. It's rather unfortunate. Stoneboy had to uh, fall so low for the unruly behavior of Shatawale. And uh, T-Flex Inside Takradi says, I think the decision was too harsh and it would be a very big blow if Charterhouse organizes a program and these artists are not on board. But Charter did not uh, force Kra say, okay, some tree you are writing, but I can't uh, read all of that. Uh, but Babamu in Tamale, you also say the decision of the VGMA board to ban Shatawale and Stoneboy for their misconduct on Saturday's awards night was a step in the right direction. And Stephen, my honest view is that what Stoneboy and Shatawale did was not right, but they were never advised when it started long ago. The decision by Chatterhouse is an overkill. This is from Paul from Brikusu. And uh, uh, lessons from Ikropong. Uh, you didn't say your name, but I... I hope your, your name is Lesson. Okay, so Lesson from Ikropon says, Chatterhouse failed to provide security. So if they are stripping their walls from Stoneboy and Shatter, then they should also be stripped of hosting the VGMA. And I am Thomario. I do agree with Arnold that the public should have had a say in this. The question is, was the academy part of the VGMA board's decision to strip them of their awards won? If not, the 30% voting power cannot outweigh the 70 percent and uh, thank you very much and this one also doesn't have a name but you say that i think stoneboy hasn't been treated fairly at all by the board for giving equal punishment to both of them we all know who started this whole brawl shatawale should have maximum punishment and not equalize and theophilus asari from achim takrasi says that the rts are to blame for the incident and must take responsibility so those were your messages sir. you can send us more on our whatsapp line 02021666633 and we'll share with the rest of the world you can post them on our facebook course as well so let's quickly uh, get back to our discussions i know that you follow this week the decision by the special prosecutor to start Prosecutions against Bahama Yaruga for tax evasion charges. There have been those who have uh, questioned the efficiency of the special prosecutor since he has he assumed office. There are those who say that he has been in office, uh, didn't have the logistics to work, and now suddenly he has started prosecuting and no other person than the Boko Central MP. Is this um, 
Is this a loud statement enough for the fight against corruption, or this is just one of those uh, political uh, game plays and propagandas uh, between MPP and NDC? Let's start a discussion. I'll start with you, Martin Bibble. Mm -hmm. I know that you have been an advocate of uh, the fight against corruption, and that anything that, uh, that uh, encourages uh, fighting mm -hmm. uh, the kanka yeah. is good. Yeah. Do you get the sense that Martin Amidu, after many months of not being seen to be active, finally has what it takes to make that statement that he's serious in that office? Uh, I'm thinking that this first case is, doesn't quite fit the bill. Yes, this case. It doesn't has, fit the bill of high profile? Yes, yes, it doesn't. Or high-end crime? Yes, yes. Yeah, then why is, are we in court? This is minor in the, in the scheme of affairs. That's why I'm wondering why he chose this one. You know, when it comes to custom duties and this, you know, there are so many uh, government agencies and even professional associations where people are granted exemptions and they are abused. You see, so in terms of the bill, this is small, this is small. Because, you know, doctors, teachers, you know, all other uh, categories of professionals get exemptions to bring in cars, and these cars are sold on, you know. So for <laughs> Mr. Yagerson to have uh, 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 brought him to court, it's quite, you know, it's strange. What are, what, what, are, what are your expectations? I mean, you know Martin Amido, and so you possibly know that if he didn't have a good case, he won't be in court. Oh, no, as for, yes, okay, it's good if you ask the question this way. As for having a good case, it may be, oh, that one, no, 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 we can't dispute that, knowing Mr. Amidu's pedigree and the rest. We are talking about whether this is the right case to start with, you see. Is this, is this case high profile enough? You see, that is where, especially looking at the extent of the loss, you see. So what it is is that he, uh, Mr. Ayaga had, uh, what do you call it, an exemption. He's brought in the car. Instead of using it personally, assuming, and I don't want to go so much into the fact because it's a matter pending before the court. But assuming it says, you're looking at the figures, they're saying he should have paid 36000 but he paid 6000 You see it. So you're looking at the, that's a loss to the state. That's about 30000 Ghana. So you see what I said, it doesn't that's quite right. fit that's the bill. Because there are bigger cases. People have reported cases worth millions of dollars. <laughs> Why didn't we <laughs> start, start with any of them? And it's interesting. I was just uh, monitoring, or not, not monitoring, actually just reading around. And I saw some, uh, uh, an interview that Mr. Piku Baku is uh, said to have granted, where he was thinking that perhaps there is a feud between Mr. Amidu and uh, Ayarega. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, stemming from the vetting, you know, at the vetting yeah. there were some uh, disagreements, a banter, so he's thinking that perhaps, you know, we are not saying definitely that is what it is, but where your first case uh, it's about a loss of 30,000 Ghana to the state. <laughs> it's, it, it's, doesn't it's, it doesn't quite. quite. All right, so let me come to you, another lawyer, uh, Bernard <coughs> Redu. Uh, this is a legal matter, so I know that as much as possible we would uh, not want to discuss uh, the substance of, of yeah. it all, but we are in court. The special prosecutor is in court for the state, prosecuting and chasing the uh, Boko Central MP, who obviously, as a member of parliament, has a certain level of immunity anyway. But is this a high-profile case enough for you? Martin Amidu thinks, no, chasing somebody like that for mm -hmm. 30,000 uh, is not a loud statement enough for the fight against corruption. Well, I, I, I would think otherwise, because for me, it sends a right signal. Because if um, I has a big fish, and if Martin could go after such a big fish, then you, it sends a good signal that he's out there to go after everybody. But there are other big fishes who come from you the see, MPP who are not see, in court. The point I want to make is, Mahamar Ayariga is MP, he's been a minister of state, he's a real big fish. So for even the special prosecutor to start from him and send some signal out there that this man is serious to fight corruption. Because yes, Martin makes the point that there are real big fish, other people with serious cases. I mean, corruption is corruption, irrespective of the figure involved. Or, it is whether, the act. or whether you are big or small. Whether you are big or small, it is the act. Because if you're supposed to pay 36,000 and you paid 6,000, God knows where else you've done other things. So for me, it is the act that we should condemn and not probably the figures involved. And the fact that it's starting from somebody like Ayariga is sending some strong signal out there that even a former minister 
and the current and the sitting MP is being chased by the, pro the special prosecutor, then you at DCE somewhere or any other person, you, you, you are not safe if you should go up, uh, 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 on with your corrupt deeds. So for me, it's rather a good signal that it is starting from somebody as big as Muhammad Yari. Let's forget about the figures coming out. I mean, it is the act. Did he evade tax? Is it lawful? Is it within the mandate of the special prosecutor to do that? Then we, we, we can say that, okay, because there have been noise over the days that what is he doing since his appointment? He came up with this logistic, uh, logistical challenges initially, but now I'm sure he has a furnished office, staff, and all people to work with. So if he started with a sitting MP, the emphasis is on a sitting MP, then it means he's out there to do something good. He's showing that he means business yes, I mean, and business he's serious with his office. I hear you guys back. So, uh, Honorable uh, Suhini, I want to know from you, I'm not sure whether to break your view from the party's position, but Ayarga is in court now. A uh, special prosecutor is dragging him uh, for what he says are uh, tax evasion charges. Your thoughts? Well, um, once again, thank you for the opportunity. Good morning to you and good morning to my colleagues and good morning to our viewers out there, especially the very good And people. our listeners on radio. Yeah, on radio as well. And uh, especially the very good people of the Tamil of uh, constituency. Let me also send out congratulatory messages to all those who are contesting uh, for positions in the new regions uh, that have been created. Uh, the NDC is organizing uh, you know, regional elections mm -hmm. today to fill vacant positions as a result of the creation of the new region. So I want to congratulate all those who are contesting and wish them the very best of luck and also urge the delegates to choose with the party's uh, interests being foremost. Now to the uh, issue of the Office of Special Prosecutor in the first case that uh, we are told uh, the office is about to prosecute. I think, first of all, it's important to uh, acknowledge the fact that corruption is something that uh, has devastating consequences and uh, we must all at every point in time be seen to be contributing to um, clamping down, clamping down or corruption. fighting it. And I also agree that it doesn't matter how big or how small it is. Uh, corruption is corruption. And I have always uh, referenced the former president Bahamas' uh, description of it as being mass murder uh, to, make it, to make the point that indeed, uh, you know, some of the devastating consequences of corruption can be likened to mass yeah. murder. Because, for example, as a result of corruption, if a hospital is not uh, provided in a community and uh, a nursing mother or a mother in uh, labor, labor loses their life, I mean, you cannot, uh, you know, countenance that. So every move that is aimed at clamping down corruption must be supported. Now, so we had as one of our measures the Office of Special Prosecutor that was promised by the NPP in opposition and uh, you know, promoted when they won the last elections. As a member of parliament, I wasn't very um, keen, uh, to be honest, uh, about uh, you know, the bill that was in parliament because I was not really convinced if this office was going to do anything significantly different you get the, the sense that it would the, be used as a, a tool uh, to chase political opponents, or what? That was not even my f initial thought. My, my initial thought was, uh, really, do we need another bureaucratic institution to fight corruption? What have we done when with we the already existing, had a justice system? What, what have we done with the existing structures that we already have? Is, have we exhausted possible means of using that structure to fight corruption? We have the legal system, we have the AG office, we have the, the uh, 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 you know, the, uh, the, there's a special prosecutor, maybe not a special prosecutor, but you have the prosecutor and the, that works with the AG. You have Shraj, you have Yoko. So my question at the time, even as I followed the discussion on the floor to pass the OSP, uh, uh, I mean the OS, the Office of Special Prosecutor Bill, yeah. was really, do we need another bureaucracy, you know? So I was not very keen. That then, we could have appointed uh, the special prosecutor coming from, for example, the Attorney General's office with designated responsibilities, exactly. and that will be it. Exactly. I was looking at what we can do with the existing infrastructure we already have for fighting corruption. We, can, we could give the Shraj more teeth, for example, give it more resources. We could give Yoko you know, some uh, more powers if they are lacking 
in that direction. Remember, I started as CEO's front office. We gave it more powers and made it Yoko. I mean, what's really, is it that the special prosecutor was going to do that we could not, you know, actually retool, if necessary, the existing uh, officers to do? But then it was a campaign promise. It had to be, you know, fulfilled. And it was... Does it look like when you, your party comes back to power, you consider scrapping the office of the special prosecutor? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't speak for the party yeah. and and I, I I'm just telling you my views yeah. when when the thing yeah. came to, to, to but if you had your wish would you I wish want I wish, I wish you would allow, allow me to this is yeah. just intro I mean yeah. this is not yeah. really substantial yeah, I, to but I wanted to nail no, some I, I, of the I, issues I, that I, 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 I we can invite me one on one that's fine that. that's but fine this is this, this is that's just fine. for this that's discussion fine. I you agree. know so mm -hmm. so so the point the point I'm making is that I, that was my first you know uh, thought about this office then the commentary that followed the you know, promotion of the bill, mm -hmm. the subsequent passage of the bill, and the appointment of a special prosecutor, then convinced me that indeed the motive behind the setting up of this office was going to make it suffer. The motive was clearly not that national in character. What do you think was the motive? For me, if you listen to the narrative that followed the promotion of the bill, the narrative that followed the passage of the bill, the narrative that followed the appointment of the smart, Mr. Martin Amidu, it did not engender this kind of national acceptability that I expected us to have of this office. If, for example, like I stated in the first place, the aim was to get everybody to contribute to fighting against corruption. There was no need to create a certain impression that I think was created that this office was to target some people and go after them. And clearly, if you look at the literature, if you look at the news report, the articles, it's, it's, it is clear that maybe it may not have been the intention of the president who was the chief promoter, but clearly it was, you know, as if this office was coming to haunt some people especially from the previous administration who were perceived to have done some corrupt deals and had to be jailed. And so that is why, for example, you will have the special prosecutor under pressure today to perform because that level of expectation was created. And so you hear a lot of the NPP and uh, 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 government officials and sympathizers complaining about how the office it's not living up to expectation. It was through those complaints that Mr. Martin Amidu had to throw his hands in the air at some point and complain that he didn't have the resources. So quickly, maybe to further that same perception, resources were provided and said, go to work like some, you know, bulldog. And when the resources were provided and action was not coming, you had the commentary again, the articles and the complaints, he's not doing anything. So it feeds into that perception, deliberate or not, but actions and inactions contributing to that perception that this is not really an institution set up to contribute to the fight against corruption generally, which must enjoy the support of all, if that is the need. I mean, if that is the intention, but to per persecute some people. So you had, for example, this week also very interesting things coming out from that office. First, there was the issue of, you know, fuel theft at the office, involving uh, uh, some people drawing fuel to the tune of our 750 Ghana cities a day, and people thought that was, you know, simply ridiculous. Some of them have come, you know, uh, to share other, the other side of the story, making the whole matter a bit murky, and you don't know who really uh, is handling what. <coughs> then, what it raised, I mean, the question it raised for me when I read the story was like, wow, is Martin Amidu corrupt? Yes, staff in his office are corrupt. Or they have been alleged to have corrupted, to have engaged themselves in corrupt act. But does that make Martin Amidu corrupt? And I, that question came to my mind because of the same mindset Martin Amidu had about people who were in charge and corrupt deals happen under them. So you, you can forgive me if I ask that yeah, question. Because if somebody was president, I mean, and you're anything, making inference. Yes, so and anything right. that happened under that president, Mr. Martin Amidu thought was sanctioned by that president, 
then the question you ask yourself is when he is in charge of a small office, not a nation, and similar infractions happen, is it fair to assume that Charlie the man too is gone. not clean? That was what came to my mind. Then the issue of a lady who was supposed to have been a leak in his office and the person, I mean, for me, it was needless attention in the media. And anybody who has followed my position on Mr. Martin Amido, especially, I mean, I told you I wasn't too keen about the special prosecutor bill, but I contributed to its passage. But when it came to Mr. Martin Amido and the vetting process, anybody who has followed me can quite remember that I, I sincerely you know, stated that I didn't have confidence in Martin Amido making any difference in the fight against corruption. Why? Because, and I stated it, anybody can check online and you will find the reasons that I provided because I thought he was not going to the office with the right mindset. Oh, and I gave reasons. <laughs> I gave the reasons. He also yeah. stated that. Yes. I, didn't I, stated, I stated <laughs> clearly, I didn't vote, I stated clearly that <laughs> he was true. qualified. <laughs> I thought he was qualified for the position. He had all that it took mm -hmm. to, to occupy that position. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think that based on reasons that I provided, yeah. you know, quoting his own articles and even answers he gave out the vetting, that I didn't think he was going to office with the mindset, with the right mindset in the fight against what would you anybody have, who is what interested would you in that article what would you can read it. I cannot go into right, the details What would you now, have considered to be the right mindset? You see, I remember I started by saying that corruption is devastating. The yeah. devastating effects of corruption is that consequential that we must all contribute to its fight. And we so, all agree that it's bad. Yes, we but you see, agree. but you see, it is also, uh, 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 it also, it, it also can be used to pursue very uh, uh, parochial gotcha. political interests that will not serve the general good of the people. And so, when I look at what is happening, for example, in the case of Mr. Mahama Yarga, I agree with Mr. Kwekubaku that you see, for me, it seems there is some personal vendetta that Mr. Martin Amidu is pursuing. And I also agree settle with lawyer score, Martin Table when he, talks about, when he talks about the expectation and the case that is going to court. You see, you couldn't have been part of a group of people who talked about millions and millions of dollars being embezzled and given the opportunity to prove yourself, you the first the case time. you take to court didn't even happen under that administration. It happened under President Akufuado. If indeed it is a crime, it happened under Mr. Akufuado. So you couldn't have been part of a group that made so much noise about corruption under a certain regime, embezzlement of millions. And the first case that you take to court actually happened in 2017. 2017. And doesn't even amount to $100,000. It is not as if hundred thousand dollars is small. It is huge. <laughs> it is huge. It's not as if thirty thousand Ghana is even small. It's huge. But compared to the expectation that was created, I see it as an anticlimax. <clears throat> and again, you're looking at the issues, Mr. Mahama Yarga. In this country, the lawyers are here. I don't determine my tax liability when I'm importing a vehicle. I don't. Nobody does. It is the responsibility of a state institution to determine how much tax you pay. So if that was determined, and I was furnished with the records, and in the case of Mr. Mahama Yarga, he has stated so that he didn't even go to the port. He cleared the vehicles through an agent. The agent went to the port. The agent was told by the state institution how much tax is due. Is due. He gave the agent how much was required. The agent paid the tax. The agent was given a receipt. In this case, in this case, in this case, if you are even prosecuting anything, the lawyers are saying we are discussing the merits or otherwise of the case. No, we are not. Dis we are not. Dis we are discussing the the case as stated by Mr. Martin Amidu. And it, it, I'm just saying the case has been stated that this is what happened. It's not fair to Mr. Mama Yerga to just talk about. Uh, invasion of tax without, without stating the, the case. The State the case. Let people, as they are following the discussion, also make up their own minds even before the judgment. I am not going to ask anybody to think in any way. I'm just stating the fact that in this country, nobody imports a car and determines the tax liability on the car. State institutions are allowed to do that. The state institutions did that for Mahama Yarga. The arguments 
of whether there were some infractions and others, the legal things, can be raised in court. But I'm saying this is the case that Mr. Martin Amidu is taking to court. That Mr. Mahamayaga brought in a car. He was told how much tax he should pay. He paid that. And later no, it was determined that he should have paid more, which he has paid. <laughs> It was determined that he should pay more, which he has actually paid more because, you see, he doesn't determine how much he's supposed to pay. So when he doesn't have any question about how much he's asked to pay, he pays. Or if he has an issue with it, he challenges it like all other institutions do. So that is the crust of the matter. And right. that is why I'm saying that for me, it's an anticlimax. Uh, so you know, I'll Martin, I'll switch to but I'm not, now, but... maybe just to state yeah. that. I feel very vindicated by what is happening by the special <laughs> prosecutor's office. And if you read my article on why I, I wasn't very confident confident on Mr. Martin. This Abidu, is it, right? You will understand. But I don't feel happy. I feel vindicated, but I don't feel happy. Because even in that article, I prayed that he will disappoint me. Unfortunately, he's not. Right. Uh, Richard Ayang, by your comments uh, on Mahama Yariga facing the special prosecutor in court. Well, <clears throat> very good morning to your good self and uh, my co-panelists here. Uh, I hope you give me the same amount of time that you gave for Honorable Saini. No, 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 no. This is just asking for fairness. Um, let me, first of all, uh, send some greetings to um, all the uh, Ghanaians who are watching us this morning, to His Excellency the President. And I want to single out the good people of OT and uh, Water Region uh, this morning. Um, let me begin, because I don't know if we're going to talk about it, the, uh, the ascent to the... Uh, the right information yes, bill. Yes, we're not, uh, we don't have that we on don't our have agenda. That, but it, it is key. I was, I was hoping that... Is it tied uh, to the Office of the Special Prosecutor? Absolutely key development uh, this week that I think that we should underscore. Because when you look at the journey of that particular law, uh, now law. But there are rumors that ministers are unwilling to release information, really, because uh, when they do, these could be used against them. No, here's the thing. The, the infrastructure for that is being set up. So the law will become effectual, I think, next, next year, year or so. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's lay the infrastructure and all the modalities put in place. I don't think any uh, minister would, because it's law. And if anybody uh, unreasonably seeking to obstruct your access to information uh, with that law in place, I think that there will be legal remedies. So that, that, that is the one thing that we, we can be assured of. But I wanted to uh, draw attention to that because when you look at the history, how this law has traveled and attempt by some to not do anything about it and the public mobilization, especially those of you in the media, to occasion its final passage uh, under uh, this president and finally uh, becoming law, I think is something that uh, all of us uh, should uh, be happy about because that was one thing uh, this administration or this uh, MPP government promised that we're going to do. And in spite of all the challenges and the difficulties, we have done it. And the cost involved to try to set up the infrastructure to make sure that, that the dream of people having access to information for whatever reason or whatever need they have for them is, uh, is realized. I think it's something that we need to commend this government uh, for having done for, for Ghana. Now, on the specific question of uh, Mr. Mahama Yariga, I, I would differ a little bit uh, to say that uh, corruption is not about sensationalism. It's about deterrence. It's about ensuring that we have a system that people can have confidence in. We have a system that is being uh, protective of the commonwealth of our country. Now, if it begins with an individual that is seen or perceived to have done something inappropriate, which resulted in uh, the loss of one CD, which legally he was not disposed to have earned, then it's important. So it's not about uh, the volume or the amount of money in question. Mm -hmm. It's about the, the act. It's about telling people that you cannot abuse the office. Because if you abuse your office to gain an advantage that calculates into 10 Ghana cities, you can equally abuse it to cause harm beyond that. 
So if it's a character issue we're trying to address, it's an institutional uh, you know, culture we're trying to establish. So it's not about where you start from and how big the amount is. You understand? We're looking at the space where we are doing things according to but, but as Suhini said, I mean, the facts suggested that he was presented with the how much to pay he paid. And when there was demand for the difference, he paid that too. So why are we in court? Well, you know, we don't, we don't seem to think that Mr. Amidou didn't consider this. You understand? It's just, you know, all of our, everything we've said, which was given him the respect as uh, a serious lawyer and a serious prosecutor. So I, I'm not going to answer that mm -hmm. question whether or not uh, this... But there's also the question but of the value point, for money, how much it's costing to prosecute this and how much we're I've already getting. underscored that for you. It's not about value for money. It's about ensuring that that culture does not uh, you know, prevail in our country. Because if we can deal with it, then it deters other people when they're going to uh, corrupt systems to mm -hmm. allow them gain advantages of one billion and all. That somebody did it for thirty thousand, and he was brought to book. So if I'm doing that much, I should rest assured I'll be I'll be brought to book. Now the the issue even is not the uh, the tax component of it. There is also an additional issue of breach of procurement rules. That I'm not sure why is not being talked about uh, in procuring some ambulance for his uh, hospital in his constituency. That is a critical matter. Uh, what is the amount involved in that? Do we know? And if you know. From Bolga to Boko, you see the road? Yeah. Terrible road. I've been, just came back from uh, Dambai, roads that was constructed, the, road, the, uh, the things are degenerating, a wide need for infrastructure development. During a period of time, we're saying we're doing infrastructure, doing infrastructure. At the same time, people uh, were getting or doing things that contravene the very uh, processes we need to get resources or to economize our resources so we can move a step further to get these infrastructure needs addressed. So. It is a question that we must approach with all the seriousness it requires. I mean, in a, in a bucket of issues that are available for the special prosecutor to pick and take to court, you cannot pick all of them and send to court. So if you have 100 cases and you pick one, let's not judge based on how, how groundbreaking this one is or how you know, uh, less groundbreaking another is. The key for me is to ensure that we in this country, we have ample evidence and seriousness, focus on the fact that if you break any rule in... But you do know that uh, Martin Amidou pursued uh, Woyome for the huge amounts we're chasing him for. That's big enough. So compared Woyome, for example, to uh, Mahama Yariga, it does support the argument that uh, Martin Amidou is actually uh, chasing small money with all the state resources. Mm -hmm. my, my, my brother, is he talk about Hmm. argument. I mean, I don't really see how that argument arises because if anything is tangential, the serious issue is that we want to fight corruption, are we? Is that our focus? Yes, we do. Okay, if that is our focus. I, mean, I want to. Yes. The president so, has told us that he wants to. Exactly. In the setting up of the special prosecutor's office. Yes. But and the, then, the, and the, the, there are all sorts of issues uh, surrounding the setting up of the of the office. Uh, the opposition NDC has views that this is going to be used as a, a tool to persecute uh, political opponents. Did you expect anything different from the NDC? Well, I'm not sure you expect me to suggest. I that mean, they, I'm just saying you've heard them. No, so no, but did you, you expect but them you're not, to say you're anything not expecting different? Them not to have a view. Well, they have a view, but if you, you see, when we're building a country, we can all have a view, but that view must lean forward. You understand? A view must lean we forward. We do expect yes. that the MPP but, to uh, prove them wrong. Well, uh, it's not about proving wrong or right. It is about building oh, a Oh, but country. it is. No, no, wait. Proving wait. wrong no, or no, right, no, it no, is. No, no, it's not. It's mm. not. You see, because if, if we get a motive right, and the motive is we are sharing ideas to build our country. Mm. So it's not about you sitting up in a situation. Because, look, let me go back to uh, Honorable Suini's point to, prove, uh, to answer your question. Now, he is talking about the the genesis of the office of special prosecutor. Huh? The bill came to, to power. Bill. Yes, yes. His opposition and his his view on it. How we have gone past that. That's a retired argument. That's a retired position. You are in parliament. You voted for the bill. The thing is law. Now we are moving forward. And you spend all this time trying to talk about something we dealt with. You understand? That is I don't the have kind the right. of that to talk about how I felt. That is the kind of position on. I am telling you that if we are building a country that we're leaning forward, okay? Any law that comes out of parliament, okay, any bill that comes out of parliament dealt with and out there becomes the collective view of parliament. Mm -hmm. 
You understand? So when you are really litigating that as though what Parliament right, has done... Mr. Mr. So, Mr. Hiago, oh. I'm, not, I'm not cutting you, but okay. we'll take a break. I'll return to you and then you make that point. Uh, this is uh, Key Points and we're live on your TV, DSTV Channel 27 now. You can also hear us on Radio 3FM 92.7. We're streaming live on Facebook. You can still send us your WhatsApp messages. We'll share with the rest of the world. Please stay.